Hey guys, what's up? My name is Art, the Enlightened One, again. Ready to do another video. It's funny, due to COVID-19, we have a lot more time on our hands because a lot of us have stayed in order. Some of us, like, have stayed in orders, executive orders. They're, sorry, their governors enacted state of... Uh, Good Lord, the, their local governors, local government enacted stay in shelter, stay at home, stay safe, quarantine procedures to help stop the spread of it. Now, of course, there's a lot of hoopla, whether or not it's true or not, or feel reckoning or not. It doesn't really matter. Here's the thing. Some people might say, oh, you're, this is a way for you to take away your rights. I'm like... I look up and it's like, really? Tell me. If the government wants to take away your rights, they can take away your rights. They can they can if they want. They always could. The only problem is you are powerless to stop them because they're the government. Simple. Oh, you don't believe me? I say, okay, here's the thing. Let's say if the pre let's say for example, depending upon the Depending upon the political preference you believe in, if the president says, I'm banning the sale of AR-15s in the United States. If you own an AR-15, owning an AR-15 is against the law. He could do that. Now, here's a problem. You look up and say, well, the Second Amendment said I can have guns. I could bear arms. But it doesn't say what kind of arms you can bear. Remember, it doesn't say what kind of weapons you can have. It doesn't say that. It says that you have the right to bear arms, but it doesn't mean that you can get this kind of weapon. So if he's, if he's and guess what? And guess what? Depending upon your political perspective, you can say, yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. President, we agree with you 100%. And go along with it. Or you can say, no, you can't, but then again, it's the law. If you put it in the law, it's a law. Okay, simple as that. Of course, he doesn't want to put the shelter in place. He, does, the president, doesn't want to put the shelter in place because it impacts society. It impacts business. You're right. It does. It impacts business significantly. I'm pretty sure you heard in the news that some churches are still holding services, regardless of what's going on. So if you had, if so if your church holds like 50 to 60 people, and you decide to go to church, nine times a day, you can get infected with COVID-19. Now, to tell you the truth, it's not that bad, really, but it is bad. Thing is, is it's like a super flu in a way, but it turns into a pneumonia. And depending upon if you survive or not, some people will survive. Most of the people will survive because... It's not going especially if you're somewhat healthy. But if you're not healthy, say for example, if you have lupus, there's one girl I know has lupus. So if she gets COVID-19, she's gonna be hit. Because <laughs> her immune system's whacked out crazy. But but since I've been quarantined for the most part, I only go out to buy groceries or pop or some stuff, something that, you know, I can't just go out and willingly go to do. This one person wanted me, this one girl, she wanted me to go hang out with her and have a little fun. And I said, nope. Because here's the thing, it's not the fact that, it's not the fact that, um, what, what, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that. One, I'm not going to travel from where she lives because that's a too far of a drive. Now, what that means, I mean, I can get stopped by the police and say, well, what you doing? They have a right to, they have a right to ticket you. Oh, well, I'm buying groceries. They look at, oh, you live in Southfield? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to come up with some kind of lie to, to get out of this ticket. And, it, and they're trying to charge you a thousand dollars for this ticket so i'm like and thing is i think i mentioned another video okay they're praying downstairs 
I have my door somewhat closed. This is like close to Passover and Easter, so they're they're doing our they they having prayer line. So if you hear any praying or some weird stuff, that's what's going on downstairs. I'm kind of used to it, so I was like, so that's why I keep you know. So right now until about nine o'clock, eight or nine o'clock, it's almost eight. Until about nine o'clock, I'm keeping the door closed to a certain extent, so it doesn't bother them, and I can keep my thoughts in order. I mean, I'm not going to risk a thousand dollar ticket if it gets <laughs> for a, a potential booty call. And if I drive out there and don't, and nothing does happen, I'll be pissed. And if I get a ticket over a thousand dollars, that'd be kind of crazy, don't you think? But anyway, so you know, like I said, I work from home. Right now, I work from home. I work from home right now, so that's fine. See, that's my bed. That's my desk. And so what happened is that starting today, we had to do a log of what we did the whole day. Basically, it's a way for them to figure out what we're doing on a daily basis. So to make sure that we're actually working. Now, because if you see right here, there's my TV right there. That's my TV. There's DVDs right there. Right over there is my PS3. I got figures, which I don't play, but that's fine. But, you know, I got my, you know, I got stuff to do for fun. So they want to make sure I'm not reading comic books all day. They want to make sure I'm not watching YouTube or this all day or playing on my phone all day. That's what they're trying to do. Not that I would do that or I'm tempted to do that because there's a lot of work to do. But the funny thing is that since I'm not in the office and I don't get bugged by people coming into the office, it's easier for me to work on my actual stuff, even though it's a lot harder. So what happened there's there so right now the office is closed our office is closed and they're doing the deep cleaning of it this week. So I'm thinking starting uh I think next week we can go into the office and pick up some equipment from our desk. Basically I'm I'm taking home one monitor and my mouse. Which makes like on my laptop using the mouse is awesome because I can do this instead of using the trackpad because it's kind of crazy using this trackpad. Like, oh my God, no. but anyway, so what happened was I got off of work early. Well, actually, on time because I get off of work, I get up at seven, I start working at seven, I get off at three, four o'clock, three thirty four. Who cares? I said, you know, let me read this book. So I said, this year I was going to read a book. A, a, a graph, a, I'm gonna read a book a week, which usually means a graphic novel. I messed up for the last couple of weeks because of other things involved. So I decided, well, I since I have a lot of loose comics, let me read these and catch up. So I had about 60 or 70 comics to buy to read. That was like six months worth. So I get about 10 comics more, so I had about 70 comics to read. And I think uh with this next batch I had, I think I got like 10 to 15 left. So that's good. So the, the, what I bought now, what I want to talk about is DK3. DK3. Now, what does DK3 mean? It's a Batman book, of course. It's a Batman book. These are nine, these are nine issues, the whole series. It's a limited series. Now, what happened was in the 80s, there was a guy named Frank Miller who basically revolutionized Batman's origin story. He wrote Batman's origin story with Batman Year One. If you have a chance to read it, read it. Now, if you think about it, anytime you see a Batman movie, how his origin story, it mimics what he wrote. If you like Daredevil, he rewrote Daredevil's story. So that's fine. So he was the big man in the 80s to 90s. Not so much now, but so what happened was after revolutionized Batman for a while, you know, Daredevil for a while, his long run Daredevil was so long. And of course, he created Electra and all that mess. When I say all that mess, I mean about the death of Electra was at that time the most gruesome comic in the 80s. And I'm like, ooh. But by today's standards, it's like, oh, really? But anyway. So what happened was in the late, was it late 88, eight, late 80s, eight, early 90s, DC asked him to write a story. So he pitched a story about Batman in the future. Okay, fine. It's called Dark Knight Returns. 
Now, what happens is this book is so good. It's a word. It's a lot of. It's a lot of story in it, but it's really good. Basically, it's Batman in his old age, like when he's like in his sixties. He's an old ass man in his sixties. He quit being Batman for a long time. Maybe one day I'll do an expose on it, but I don't want. But I don't want to give out all the spoilers if you want to buy the book. So I just give you a little whet your appetite. He decides to become Batman again. And he basically sh pissed off the federal government. And he sent in Superman, who became the errand boy of the federal government, was ordered to kill Super Batman. Obviously, Batman survived. <laughs> if you saw the the movie Man of Steel, uh, Batman vs. Superman, their scene where they fight was taken basically from Dark Knight Returns. So that's so so it's kind of pretty cool. If you saw the Batman with the Batman armor, that came from that series. It became a huge hit, huge hit. Even like about five six years ago, they made an animated movie in two parts. It's like it's like a two hour movie. If you put it together, it's called the Dark Knight Returns with Peter Weller, who played Robocop as Batman. Really killer. I liked it. So what happens in the 90s, they asked him to, you know, the, after that, about early 2000s, he came up with DK2, Dark Knight Returns Part 2. It started going a straight line, then it went off the curves and went off the rails, and no one knew what the hell was going on. And if you manage to get all four parts of that, you read it, and you're like, what the fuck happened? What the hell? You lost your damn touch. After being in comics for 30 plus years, I'm thinking Frank Miller, he was a very big fan, very big star. He's a legend. And the funny thing is, one of the, he, his, he also, in the late 90s, mid to late 90s, with Dark Horse Comics, created Sin City, which was a very critically acclaimed, gritty, pulp style comic. Now, if you ever heard of Sin City, like the movie, that was his creation. He directed Sin City 2, which kind of sucked, but the story, the comic book was much better than the, story, than the movie, and that's correct. But he also directed The Spirit, the movie The Spirit, which I thought was pretty funny. But anyway, so all of a sudden, about 2017, he comes out with DK3. Let me show you the covers. And there's variant covers, which I didn't get. But now the fun thing is, about a couple years ago, I was at a comic book convention. And this guy had the whole series for a buck a piece. So this is issue one. Issue two. Issue three. Issue four. And this is a cool cover right there. Issue five, issue six, issue seven, which is all one of the coolest covers. Issue eight, and the last one is issue nine. Batman gets fucked up in this one too, and he's still an old man. He's an old man in this book too, still, and he gets fucked up and almost dies. And, but he survives. I'm not gonna tell you the story. I'm gonna, I just it took me the last three hours to read all all these after I got off work. Three hours, including eating dinner, listen to a podcast while I'm reading this, so that way my mind's stimulated to read this. And I'll tell you something, I enjoyed this damn book. So, Dark Knight Returns, awesome book. Dark Knight Two, I'll say skip that. But dark, this one redeemed. Me. He redeemed himself. But then again, he didn't write it by himself. He also, this guy named Brian Azzarello, who's also a really good writer, they both wrote this book together. So I think that's the reason why this, this kicked ass a lot. So, my recommendation, if you can get all nine, get all nine. If you get it as a paperback, get it as a paperback. It's a very good read. And plus, it puts a, another unique spin on the Batman mythos. 
So, you know, it's almost 8 o'clock. Um, oh, it's after 8, I'm sorry. Don't want to go too long on this video, but the thing is that, you know, whatever you do, try to be enlightened. Try to be enlightened. Stay safe. Now, not necessarily for you, but for other people around you, because other people, you could be doing everything perfectly, but other people around you could fuck your shit up. That's an enlightened phase right there. Like, for example, some people with the handle, you know, you see people, you go to a store like Walmart or Meyer Day, they're wiping down the handles now, sanitizing the whole thing. And it's like, really? And today, so yesterday I said, okay, let me see if I can buy, buy some Lysol spray. You know, like this. No one, you can't buy it anywhere. Nowhere. And then again, nine times out of ten, until this whole thing is over, you probably won't even buy this anymore. You can't probably won't even get this. Uh, my mom just bought like ten rolls of toilet paper, ten packets of toilet paper because I'm since I'm home, so you know I'm doing a little bit more business, TMI, but that's okay. But you can understand that. But you know what I'm saying, not because of me, but you know just just, speak, just so we can have it. You know, any kind of cleaners are disinfected, you can't buy anymore. So, and plus, they're not making it in Tatra, they're not really making them that much anymore either. And the thing is, the stores are hoarding those things. The stores are actually hoarding. Actually, there is hand sanitizer, there's hand sanitizer at the stores, cleaning supplies like that at the store, and everything. They, they're at the stores, but they have to hoard it for their own people. They had to hoard that for their own people so that way they can clean up everything because of all this. Because no one wants to catch this shit. So, with that, I want you to stay safe. Stay positive. Stay enlightened. And with that, have a nice... Today's Tuesday, right? Yeah, Tuesday. Talk to you later.